so we're Climatic. Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit more about uh, what we are, how we see software developing. Um, you can think of us a bit as a, as a programmatic backend for carbon measurements in general, and I'll tell you a bit more why I think that's important. Um, we're quite mission-driven as a team. Uh, we think our mission, our mission is really to drive uh, climate action through data and insight, uh, and I'll tell you how we do this. Um, as mentioned, we, we're really a back-end, and we think of us as a, a back-end for emission measurement. Uh, and the back-end really consists of uh, three layers. Like, so we have a, a database layer uh, where we currently house a lot of emission factors, and emission factors, if you, um, you know, if you drive for a mile or if you fly for a mile, the amount of carbon you emit for that mile, uh, it's an average. Um, then we have a level where we uh, do a bit of computation, and we try to abstract the complexity of the database, um, and then we have an API, and we allow the API allows you to integrate uh, our stack with your software uh, or build new software on top. Um, why are we doing this? So, oh my God. Uh, so why are we doing this? Uh, we think that if you think about you know, a couple of years ahead of you, us, uh, we think that all software will have to become climate aware. And what do we mean by climate aware? So for example, uh, B2B or business intelligence software, if you think about logistics, uh, you know, energy management, uh, supply chain tracking, any software that organizations use already internally, we think that in a couple of years, it doesn't just have to be price or units, but actually carbon and CO2 emissions should be part of the equation and should be part of the decision matrix. Um, there are already a, b a bunch of solutions out there about ESG, and a number of them are pitching today. Um, they have a dedicated ESG solution, and often it's quite niche. There's some for food, there's some for like yeah, SMEs, there's some for big corporates, uh, and they build you a specific niche uh, solution for that, and we see that too. Um, and lastly, we're seeing a bunch of new applications are being developed, right? That everybody is moving, everybody's trying to tackle this climate crisis, um, and we think they could use our stack and build this on top of what we're doing. I'll give you a few examples. So for example, Google Cloud, uh, Google Flights, I'm sure you've seen this, uh, tells you already what the most um, climate-friendly way is of flying, if you do want to fly um, from A to B. In this case, an example from uh, Berlin, where we are, uh, to Zurich, and how you can choose a flight that's actually um, better than another one. Um, I took the train, I have to say, which is great. Um, this is Forto, it was a freight forwarder, um, and you can already see that you know, the amount of tons you're emitting from sea freight versus air freight, and actually, crucially, on the, on the right, you see it says 4.5 grams per um, ton of kilometer by, air fr by sea freight, and 813 grams per ton of kilometer by air freight. And this is already, so this is software that's a freight forwarder, and they're surfacing this carbon emission data already today. Um, this is an example of an ESG software uh, that comes from a privacy compliance perspective. They looked at privacy and compliance, and they're moving into this ESG space uh, and surfacing uh, you know, the carbon neutral plan of that company. And on the right, um, this is an energy management software for buildings um, that is also going to include carbon metrics in the future. And lastly, this is actually one of our examples. So we have uh, somebody picked up our API and built new applications on top. So he picked it up played around with it, and posted it on Twitter. We didn't even know about it. Uh, um, <coughs> but most developers currently are struggling with that. Right? And this is, there's a couple of reasons why this is actually difficult. Uh, the first one is the scientific data and the methodology is much messier uh, and much more difficult than you expect it to be. Often the data is in silos. It's hard to access. When you do access it, it's not always easy to understand the methodology uh, behind it. And you don't really know, uh, you know how to access it. Um, especially, by the way, if you want to do something international, right? If you do it in one country, it's doable. If you move from one country and you want to move to the next, or if you want to track your supply chains, really, really hard, because every country has a different methodology, different units to convert it, et cetera. The existing solutions that companies use today are not scalable. And that's because a lot of them use, AP, uh, use consulting. I think that's one of the main drivers. They do big consulting assessments, huge consultancies. Everything is done manually. There's no real time inside. Uh, it's really hard to automate this at the moment. Um, and lastly, it's almost entirely inaccessible by experts. Once you look at the data and you, have, you do not have a scientific background, it's much harder than you expect it to be, and actually that it should be. And that's where we come in. Um, so as I said earlier, we have three layers. We have a data layer, an intelligence layer, and an integration layer. Um, the data layer uh, is, is a, an open database of emission factors. So we approach this 
open. So everybody can, this is a database that lives on GitHub. At the minute, you can access it, you can download it, you can commercialize it. And we're working with NGOs, with public bodies, on building the most comprehensive data set um, available with emission factors. And then we put a computational layer on top of that to strip away the complexity of that data and make it accessible to anyone that actually doesn't understand the nitty gritty of it all. Um, and then we make that, we can integrate it using our API and it can w w live in any of your software. It can live at SAP, uh, or you build your own applications on top. Um, we think that's quite relevant because every corporate that we speak to needs a niche solution that's specific to their needs. They have struggled to use these one, fits all, one size fits all solutions. There's many use cases. These are use cases we cover today. Um, so energy, logistics, travel. Um, one of the most popular ones we see at the moment is cloud computing. Uh, it's a much larger footprint than you expect. Uh, building management. Um, a few others, and this week we're actually adding uh, spend-based data, so that if you spend $1 on, I don't know, paper, for example, it tells you what the CO2 equivalent is of that spend. Uh, so we're adding all this to our API, and it's being used um, every day. So this allows you to really uh, integrate like carbon metrics in three very easy steps. So you access our open database, and you can see some of the, the data sources we're using. Um, then you integrate it with, your, with our API, and then you have a control board. And the control board lets you really sort of dial up or down the level of abstraction you want and how much accuracy you need um, to measure your, uh, your carbon accounting. Our platform is free, so we have a free community tier um, that lets anybody to use it and onboard it uh, and use the public data set uh, you have. We actually really decided to keep that public data not just open, but the access free as well, so everybody can get started on it. Uh, and eventually, you're going to hit a, uh, some limits and you want to move to a professional tier uh, where you can access premium data and some of the advanced computations that we offer. Um, there's a bunch of revenue channels we hope to offer in the future. Um, if anybody's interested, I can talk you through those. Uh, but there's a lot that we can do once the API uh, is integrated. Um, so we have a, a pretty experienced team. We've hired some people from MIT um, and the Potsdam Institute for Climate Impact Research on, uh, to help us with the data side of it. Uh, we're joined by people from Mozilla, um, the head of product from The Guardian, and, and us founders, uh, you know, my co-founders already uh, built two companies, exited one. Um, I spent some time at startups and some experience at Google. Uh, so a pretty strong team. We're mostly based in Berlin. Uh, we have half of our team spread uh, around Europe from all the way from Finland down to the south of Spain. Um, but that works pretty well. Uh, and uh, in these days, it's pretty easy to do. Um, as for the roadmap, uh, so we raised the seed round from Cherry Ventures in June uh, that uh, allowed us to kind of build the product and launch the beta. The beta is available as of September. Um, and then we're going to raise a seed round uh, probably at the end of Q1, early Q2, that we meant to accelerate growth. Um, that we're going to invest more in the machine learning that we're adding uh, and more marketing as well. Um, and then hopefully a Series A uh, sometime in 23. So that's it. Thank you.